And welcome back. Breaking. Hillary speaks on TV, claims to take responsibility, then promptly shifts blame for her loss. Well, that sounds like the Hillary we all remember. Hillary Clinton has publicly blamed Jim Comey and Russian WikiLeaks for her loss. From Zero Hedge, denial is not just a river in Egypt. Speaking during an interview on CNN, Losing presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton explained why she thinks she lost the election. <clears throat> Her loss had nothing to do with the WikiLeaks, had nothing to do with the email investigation. She demonized publicly the white working class majority of America, period. That's why she lost. Let's take a listen anyway. But I was on the way to winning until the combination of Jim Comey's letter on October 28th and Russian WikiLeaks raised doubts in the minds of people who were inclined to vote for me but got scared off. And the evidence for that intervening uh, event is, I think, um, compelling, persuasive. <laughs> Still never take responsibility. It's a mental illness that she has. <clears throat> she should just go into the woods and never return. Governor Mike Huckabee <clears throat> just said this about the GOP. If the GOP Congress can't even stop Planned Parenthood funding, then they are as worthless as milk as a milk bucket under a bull. Well, a part of me agrees with him, <clears throat> mainly because half of the Republicans are, are run by international corporations. They're funded by international corporations. They're not even really Republicans, just like how the Democrats are not even real liberals. I'm definitely in inclined to agree with what he said there. I mean, got the Senate, got Congress and the presidency, and they're still having trouble passing things. How is that possible? Because half the Republicans aren't real Republicans. They're globalists. Uh-oh. Healthcare bill going down again. Possibly. House Republican leaders are losing votes on President Trump's latest iteration, iteration of healthcare bill. From the Wall Street Journal, House Republican leaders are on the brink of losing too many GOP votes to pass their health care bill overturning much of the Affordable Care Act, potentially dashing hopes raised by the White House of a big legislative win this week. At least 21 House Republicans have now said they oppose the latest version of the Republican plan to overhaul the health care system with an almost equal number publicly undecided on the bill. House GOP leaders can likely lose only 22 GOP votes to pass the bill because it isn't expected to receive any Democrat support. House GOP leaders, often prodded publicly by the White House, have tried to reach enough support to call a vote on the health care bill twice before, and a third disappointment could sink their efforts for the foreseeable future. That would mark a significant setback for the Republican Party that now fully controls Congress and the White House and has made undoing the ACA a top promise for the past six years. The President, Vice President, and top aides had said that they were confident about closing in on the votes for a health care bill soon. Tuesday morning, Representative Fred Upton a former House Energy and Commerce Committee chairman who is widely respected among House Republicans told a Michigan radio station he couldn't support the bill in its current form. There are a good number of us that have raised real red flags and concerns, Mr. Upton said. It's not going to get my yes vote the way that it is. Mr. Upton's opposition is a significant blow to Speaker Paul Ryan and other Republican leaders because the Michigan lawmaker was one of the main authors of previous bills that would repeal the ACA. He served on the task force that helped craft Mr. Ryan's health plan last year and has been a strong proponent of toppling the 2010 law. 
On Monday, Representative Billy Long, a Missouri Republican who doesn't often break ranks with the GOP leaders, also said he couldn't support the bill. GOP leaders have been struggling to craft legislation that strips away the ACA aggressively enough to appease conservatives while maintaining enough protections to preserve support from centrist Republicans. Tuesday's developments suggest the task may, beyond, may be beyond reach. Republican lawmakers in swing districts have been especially concerned over an amendment that could let states opt out of parts of the ACA. It would allow insurers in some states to charge higher premiums to people with pre-existing health conditions who let their coverage lapse. But many Republicans, including Messers, Long, and Upton, worried that this would break their promise on a regulation that has long been the most popular part of the ACA. I've supported the practice of not allowing pre-existing illness to be discriminated against from the very get-go, Mr. Upton said Tuesday. This amendment torpedoes that, and I told leadership that I cannot support this bill with this provision in it. Well, it appears quite clear that the Republicans are never going to get on board unless there is a complete revamp, replace and repeal of Obamacare. My major concern is the globalists within the Republican Party. We all know that the Democrats will never vote for anything that Trump wants because, well, they're Democrats. They, they're anti-Western, anti-America. They're not going to vote for anything pro-America. And then you have the Republicans who could pass anything they want, anything that they wanted. And half the Republicans are globalists. So it's an uphill battle. But if this doesn't work, I'm convinced that Trump would follow his own philosophy and never, ever give up.